Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm going to give it just a second. It seems like the internet's moving a little slow this morning, so I'm going to give it just a couple extra seconds here to kick up, make sure that we're working okay. How was your Friday, everyone? Good to see you guys. Hope you're having a great day. This is a topic um, that was actually requested by you guys. So shout out to Kim, wherever uh, Kim is, if she sees this on the replay or in the live, this was a great topic. And we're talking about today how to identify a fake friendship. How to identify a fake friendship. And so we're gonna be talking about that. So if you guys are hopping on, say hi, tell me where you're from. And we will dive into this in just a second. So um, there are some things that the Bible talks about that are important to be a part of a healthy friendship. In our personal lives and so if you want a really really good study on healthy friendships I would encourage you guys to read through the book of Proverbs Proverbs is a great book to look through if you want to have really good scripture on what healthy friendships in the body of Christ should look like amen and so you guys have heard me say this before I'm saying it again just because I always like to preface with this as Christians it's best for us to use the model that Jesus used when it comes to our friendships hey Erica Raleigh, North Carolina. I have been to Raleigh, North Carolina. That's awesome. Good to see you. Um, so the model that Jesus used um, was basically what he did was he loved on everybody. He outreached to everybody, right? But those that he kept in his closest friend circle, those were his confidant-like people, he guarded pretty carefully, right? Not everyone was able to be there with him for the big moments of his life. Usually he was surrounded by one or two close people who had a proven track record with him of being faithful, of loving God, of serving God. Amen. And so that's kind of the model that I like for us to follow as Christians. Amen. Because it's the model that Jesus used. So why would it not be a great model, right? We love on everybody. You know, we, we outreach to everybody, but in your closest friend circle, those are the people you got to guard more carefully. Why? Because stuff rubs off. Hey, Christian, good to see you. So if stuff rubs off, if you're constantly hanging out around a bad influence, or in this case, we're talking about a fake influence, that can be really not good and it can be crippling for your self-esteem. If you constantly feel like you're not good enough, it can be really bad for your self-esteem if you never know where you truly stand with someone. They're hot towards you one minute, they're cold towards you the next minute, you know, and that's not good. We need genuine people in our lives. And it's so good to even pray a prayer, say, God, expose the fake friends, the wrong alliances in my life and bring in the right alliances that you have for me in my personal life. You know, I will never forget, I prayed that prayer many years ago now, and it was such a painful season. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It was a prayer that God prompted me to pray, and it was a very challenging season for me because what happened was God removed some people that I thought would stay and that I really wanted to keep in my personal life, and then he kept and brought in some people that I wouldn't have expected. I would have thought that maybe he would have removed some of the people that stayed, and I would have thought that maybe he wouldn't have moved in some of the people that he moved in. And so that's why it's so important for us to surrender this area of our lives to the Lord. Because you know what? He knows what's best, right? So often we think that we know what's best when it comes to our friendships, relationships, whatever it may be in our personal lives. But God is the one who sees all. Hey, Charlie, he's the one who sees those inner motives of people's heart because I can tell you guys those of you guys who have been in the <laughs> a dating relationship before can tell you people can hide very easily and not show you those true colors that come out over a period of time right so people put on their best first impression when they're in front of you and this is kind of what fake friends do a lot of the time right you know and sometimes it's because they're just not wanting to be rude to your face okay so it's not even that they always have horrible motives in the moment but what they'll do is they will go and talk about you behind your back they won't really be for you but then when you're talking to them face to face they'll act like they are right and so what a, one of the things that we have to do is to bring the stuff to the Lord and to say God even when I can't see behind the facade even when I can't see behind those masks that people are putting up 
you can see the heart motive behind this situation. You know who's a good alignment for me. Here's the deal, guys. So often we villainize people when it's not even that they're a bad person. They're just not supposed to be connected with us in that season. Sometimes they're a great Christian person, but they're just not called to be running with you in that moment. Amen. And so often we will villainize people who are, you know, not running with us at the current time. And it's not always that they're a bad person. Sometimes it's simply just that God is calling you to go separate ways. You know, um, think about like Paul and Barnabas in the Bible. You know, they still had a powerful impact for the kingdom, but at one point they parted ways, right? Their mission separated. Now, does that mean that God still couldn't use both of them? Of course not, right? And so sometimes there are seasonal alliances in our life. Sometimes there are times when a friendship is true and genuine over here, but over here, that thing has died off. Over here, God's saying, no, you know, I am calling you apart in this season. This is no longer something that I, you were supposed to be connected with at this season in your life. Doesn't even mean that you're a bad person or that they're a bad person just because God is calling you to split off and to go separate ways. It just means that that season has lifted in your life. And what gets so many Christians is they will confuse a seasonal friendship for a lifetime acquaintance, okay? And there, I want to tell you guys, there are very few lifetime acquaintances, okay? They do exist, um, but there are a lot of people who are not going to run with you on your whole race. And that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, sometimes the reason is you're growing super fast in your walk with God. And that other person is not really moving that fast. And that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with that person. It just means that you guys are going at different speeds in your life. And God is trying to get you to go further because he's trying to launch you into greater blessing. And if you're still hanging on to this person who's still kind of going around at a turtle pace, when you're that rabbit that's trying to speed off it could hinder you from stepping into things and so sometimes God will separate friendships because you're simply moving at a different pace and you're going in different directions with your personal life it's not because they're horrible it's not because you're horrible you know the other thing is sometimes their rejection is God's protection amen and so sometimes we get so upset rejection hurts doesn't it guys a lot of us we don't like being told no we don't like being rejected but sometimes the reason that God will separate people is because he sees where you're headed in the future amen and so sometimes the reason that relationship that friendship that alliance and ministry whatever it may be does not work out is because God is protecting you from something that you don't even see down the line and you know in those moments you don't have to be ugly to people you don't have to be ugly to people, you know? Sometimes it just means that you are called in different directions, ladies and gents. But at the same time, if God is the one that's separating it, don't try to keep pulling it back into your life. I see this so often where people will try to hang on to something that's dead from a previous season. They will grip onto that thing and hold on. And God's going, I need you to release your grip. I've got this new thing over here that I'm trying to bring into your personal life, but you're hanging on to this dead thing over here. And it is preventing me from moving in this thing that I want to bring you. You know, there's a story of a guy who um, he was hanging on to a relationship that was not of the Lord. This lady was married and he was talking to her. He was single, which that's against the Bible. First of all, that's never going to be what God tells you to do. Amen. Um, but he was hanging on to this thing and he was praying for this godly spouse and he could not for the life of him figure out why he couldn't meet the right person. Well, he was still meeting up with this married woman on a regular basis and God told him, he said, I am not going to send your godly spouse until you let go of this dead thing that is not of me over your life. He said, I'm not doing it. You need to focus on getting right with me first. You need to focus on getting close to me in your walk, and then I will send that godly spouse. So often we are praying for a godly spouse, and we're not walking it ourselves, and God's going, you're not ready for that thing yet. If I, I gave that thing to you when you wanted it, you would abort it because you're not there yet. Amen? And so we've got to be willing to submit ourselves unto God first. Then we can resist the devil and he will flee. Then we can walk in those promises. But obedience matters so much, ladies and gents. And so all of that to say, sometimes that rejection really is God's protection over that circumstance or over that friendship or over that situation. And it doesn't always mean that they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Sometimes it's just that God is splitting you guys off because you are called to do different things for the kingdom of God in that particular moment. Amen? 
So what's crazy is I haven't even gotten into my notes yet. <laughs> um, so hang with me guys, okay? All right, so let me get back on track here a little bit. How to identify fake friends, all right? So the other thing you need to watch for when it comes to fake friendships is be very careful of who does not cheer for you when you're in a winning season of your life. Watch that very, very carefully, okay? Be very careful to watch for who does not cheer for you when you're in a winning season of your life, okay? A lot of times these are people who are dealing with jealousy, people who secretly resent you, people who are dealing with their own junk on their life, amen? But that can sometimes reveal a hidden motive of someone's heart. So let's say that you just bought a new house and you are super excited about that and you go tell someone who is supposed to be one of your closest friends and they have a response that's just like, oh yay but they don't really mean it that's something to kind of watch for ladies and gents because the people who are truly for you in your life are going to celebrate with you when you announce hey you know me and my spouse we're going to have a baby you know they should be so excited with you in these things if they're in a healthy place in their own walk with god and if they're truly for you amen so again be very careful for who doesn't cheer for you when you win okay all right, we already talked about this, but I wanna reiterate this. Not everyone who started with you is gonna finish with you, and that's okay. Doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with you or with them, it just means it may not be the particular season that you guys are still supposed to be running with each other, okay? And so let me give you an example from my personal life. I had a friend that I was friends with her for 16 years, ladies and gents, long-term friendship. And we hung out for a long time, but then there was a particular season where I was running this way towards Jesus and she picked a path of disobedience in her life over here. And I'm not gonna get into details about what that thing was. And I was trying to hold on to this friendship over here. And I was going, God, I've been friends with this person for so long, we're so close. And God was trying to get me to surrender this thing. And I was not being obedient in that moment. Can we have truth talk? Jill was not being obedient. And God was saying, I need you to release this thing because if you don't release this thing, it's gonna have a bad influence on you. You're trying to run towards me. This person is no longer trying to run towards me. They picked a disobedient path in their life. And I can't have you guys run in the same way that you did before. And God said, it's nothing personal. I'm gonna take care of her. I'm gonna love on her. You know, it's not even to say that she's a bad person, but God says, you guys can't run together right now. Hello, who am I talking to today? And so as a result of me not being willing to release it when God was telling me to, he forced this person to come against me and I got hurt way more in the process than I would have had to if I had just been obedient and let that thing go. And so that's a cautionary warning word of learning from my life and doing things the wrong way that if we would just listen to Jesus sometimes, we could avoid so much heartache and so much pain. And the reason that I tried to hang on to that friendship in the moment was just because it was familiar. Who am I talking to today? We are drawn towards familiarity and comfort a lot of the time, but we've got to be willing to change with Holy Spirit. When God is saying that there's a new season, you need to align with him and go, okay, God, it's a new season. What was good for me over here may not necessarily be what's best for me right now or in my future. Amen. And so often we are looking at people and situations for how we saw them back here. And God's going, no, behold, I do a new thing in your personal life. Amen. He goes, I'm going to bring good and new and faithful alliances into your life, but you've got to be willing to surrender what I'm asking you to surrender so that I can step you forward into new things and so that good things can be birthed in your personal life. Who am I talking to today? Amen. All right. So let's talk about the next kind of fake friendship that you want to avoid. These are gossipers. Okay. So my friends and I, um, in my close friend circle, we kind of started something a few years ago that I love with just a couple of my really close friends that are confidants, that I pray with, that are godly accountability with me. And basically we have a rule that if one of us starts to get a little bit gossipy towards the other person, we just call it out. Like we go, um, that makes me a little uncomfortable. I feel like we're getting a little gossipy. Let's change the conversation. And we will legit call each other out like that. And so we do that on a regular basis, you guys. And thankfully it doesn't come up much. You know, once we started implementing that rule, we naturally became a lot more watchful of when we started to get into that space. But you've gotta be very, very careful not to surround yourself with gossipers or people who tell other people's secrets, okay? And I wanna read you some scripture on that today because the Bible talks about this a lot. Now, gossiping tends to lean more towards females, you know, um, but I've seen guys who can fall into this too. So it's something that we need to be very, very careful of, okay? All right, um, 
So, 1 Timothy 5.13 says, At the same time, this is referring to the women, they also learn to be idle as they go around from house to house, and not merely idle, but also gossips and busybodies, talking about things not proper to mention. Okay, so if you understand the scriptures in the context of relationships, um, if you look in the Bible, but this is also something that's really important for us. You know, a lot of times people gossip because they're bored. People gossip because they're not focused on the right things, right? And so if we would shift our focus, when we start to get into that place where we're tempted to start talking about other people's personal lives, their secrets, their drama, all of that stuff, what we've got to do is refocus and go, nope, I'm not going to align myself with that. We're not going to go there. We're not going to talk about that. And so let me read you one more, and then I want to talk about why it's important to kind of distance ourselves from someone who is unwilling to stop gossiping in our close friend circle. Now, if you're around a person who you call it out and you say, hey, this makes me a little uncomfortable. Can we talk about something else? And they're receptive to it. That could be an awesome Jesus-loving person that's just having a moment, right? Okay, I'm not saying we villainize people, okay? We're human, all right? But if it's a person who is constantly in that mode, who is constantly not keeping confident, you know, people's secrets, who is constantly wanting to engage in gossip, who's not being respectful when you try to separate yourself from that, that's a person that you probably need to create a little bit of distance with, okay? It's not saying you have to be ugly and go, oh, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. No, you know, but you can kind of create some space in that until they're willing to get obedient and healthy. Amen? All right, so Proverbs 2019 says, He who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossip, okay? So I want to tell you guys a secret here. If they're talking about them and sharing their secrets that were supposed to be private, and if they're gossiping about that other person, I can guarantee you they're also sharing your stuff. I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen. And so if they can't keep another person's secrets, if they're telling you phrases like this, if they say, well, so-and-so told me to keep this quiet, but, you know, you really don't know them, and it's not a big deal. I know you're not going to say anything. That should be your alarm bell going off, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what they have just disclosed to you is that they don't respect that boundary that another person asked them to keep. And so while they may think it's very innocent, you guys, you know, we're not supposed to engage in those behaviors where we are breaking another person's trust in us. Amen. And so people who are spreading gossip about others and who are sharing other people's secrets are the same people, ladies and gents, who are going to go and share your junk. So be very careful. If you specifically ask a friend, hey, please don't share this about me. This is a struggle I'm going through. You know, let's just say that you share the sin that you're struggling with and you're getting help. You've got accountability from your church. And then you find out that that friend has went and told all the rest of your friend group about it when you ask them not to. Keep your mouth shut around these people, ladies and gentlemen. Fruit speaks. Amen. And so you've got to be very careful. And that's why the Bible says do not associate with the gossip. Amen. So in your close friend circle, ladies and gents, if people are not willing to be respectful of boundaries, sometimes you need to create a little bit of distance there because that can represent a fake friend. What's a real friend? A real friend is someone who would keep that in a place of confidence. A real friend is someone who, when you're in a place that's down, they're going to help to try to build you up. They're going to be in a place where they're pointing you towards Jesus. They're going to be in a place where they're trying to encourage you and live a godly life themselves. Amen? So this is really, really critical. Okay? The next type of, quote-unquote, fake friendship are people who do not reciprocate with you. Okay, they never initiate plans with you and they don't keep in touch. So I've been through a few of these in my life before. And again, I don't necessarily think that they're bad people. Again, it could just be that this seasonal friendship is splitting off. But again, you got to know when to let go, ladies and gents. So let's say that you're always the one that's reaching out and initiating plans. You're always the one who is texting first. You're always the one who's picking up the phone to call. And you never hear from this person. And when you do hear from them, it's short-lived. It's not really, you know, it doesn't go both ways. It's kind of like, you know, in our walk with God. You know, we it should be a conversation, right? Friendship has a give and take right? And so often we treat our walk with God, and you guys have heard me talk about this before, where we go in and we treat God kind of like a vending machine. We go, God, I want you to do this, this, and this for me today. I want it done this way. I want it done in this timing. And then we check out and we leave. And God's going, I want to be your friend. I, I want to hear about those things in your life, but I also want to commune with you. 
I also want to hang out with you. I want you to hear my heart over your life. I want you to hear my heart over what's going on in the world. I want to just sit with you and hang out. You know, I have a close friend and we are silly. We've been friends for so long now and we are so comfortable with each other that sometimes we will just hang out on the phone in complete silence. We'll be off doing different things and we try not to do this much so that it doesn't just ring up the phone bill. Um, but, you know, we'll go off and be doing different things and we'll just be hanging out with each other, you know, and th that's just, you know, a quality time thing, I guess. We'll just hang out and just, that's her love language is quality time. And so, you know, that builds up her tank, so to speak, right? And so God is kind of the same way, you know, he wants us to come to him with a heart of, yes, he wants to hear what's going on with us, but he goes, I don't just want to hear your list of prayer requests. I want us to be friends. I want us to hang out. I want you to hear my heart about what's going on. I want to show you great and unsearchable things that you do not yet know over your life. And so this is the place where we can go deeper in our walk with God. And so just like we need to have that depth in our walk with God, friendships should have a certain amount of depth if they're close friendships in our personal life. And I'm sure you guys have either been in a friendship or a relationship where you're the only one who's give, 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 and there's nothing that's coming back. And I want to tell you guys, one-sided friendships do not work long term, ladies and gents, they just don't. And so be very careful with people who never reciprocate. So these could be people who always cancel on you the last minute before hangouts. Now, every single one of us has stuff come up sometimes, right? We live busy lives. <laughs> um, and so, you know, if this is a person who every once in a while they have something come up, they have to cancel. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who every single time you set something up, they're constantly canceling like an hour before the event's supposed to start. You know, that's a person who is not respectful of your time. That's a person who is not respectful of you. And so that's a person who I would create some distance for. That's a fake friend and that they have shown you that they do not respect you. Amen. Okay. All right. So here's the next type. The people who are cool with you until you start talking about Jesus and the lifestyle of purity, they will quote unquote accept you, just not your stance for truth. I've had these people in my life too who they're cool with you, you can talk about certain topics of conversation, but the moment that you start taking a stand for purity and you go, I'm not going to that place, I'm not going to the club, you know, I'm a Christian, I really don't need to be behaving in that, suddenly they're holding a grudge, suddenly they're not treating you the same way. That's not a true friendship that you should have in your close circle. Maybe that's someone that you can outreach to, but that should not be BFF in your life. Hello, who am I talking to today? So there's so many people who will quote unquote accept you if you leave out this Jesus part, if you leave out the lifestyle of purity, if you bend to what they want to do when it doesn't align with what God says over your life. And ladies and gents, you've got to be careful. Those are not genuine, true, close, confidant kind of friendships that you need to keep in your close friend circle. Amen. If it's a friendship or a relationship that's of God in your life, it's going to draw you closer to the heart of the Father, not farther away from Him. Amen. So a good clue is if that relationship, that friendship in your personal life is leading you farther away from God, if they're leading you to be involved in activities that do not please Him, all of a sudden over here you did not have an alcohol problem and then you start hanging out with a certain crowd that goes and drinks all the time and suddenly you discover you have a problem, those those friendships are not of God over your life, ladies and gents. The best way to look at this is to check the fruit. Amen? You know, that can apply to all kinds of different sins. Gossip, it can apply to drugs, it can apply to, you know, all kinds of different stuff. And so just be careful, ladies and gents. All right? So um, here's the next one. Fake friendship. We're talking about this, all right? So people who are only for you when they're getting something from you, okay? So I like to call these yes men or yes people, right? So you never hear from these people when you need something, when there's a life crisis, when you're in the hospital, when X, Y, Z happens to you. You know, you never hear from them then, but they always come to you when they need something. They always expect you to be there when they need something. And again, that goes with that give and take being really off balance in the friendship, amen? You know, there should be something when you're walking in true friendship with someone where if they're in a moment of crisis, they need you, you're there, you know, and then vice versa, amen? 
You know, I heard someone say, and I, I don't know how truthful this is, but it would make sense to me, that there's only so many close friendships that you can truly steward and maintain in your close friend circle just because of the amount of time that you should be devoting to those. And it makes sense to me, you know, because if we're truly involved in that give and take, you know, that means investing in someone. And then you need to be very careful who you are investing in. Think about it like this. You know, we think very carefully about where we invest our finances, right? We think very carefully about stocks. We think very carefully about investing our paycheck in the right sources so that it doesn't just get swindled away. I want to tell you guys, relationships in your life are investments. And some of you guys are pouring out an investment, time, energy, mentoring, whatever, into a person that is not going anywhere, ladies and gents. Sometimes you need to pick up that resource, put it on something that is fruitful, someone who is for you, someone that's chasing after God in your life, and go, this is where I am reallocating this investment because I wanna see multiplication. I wanna see these seeds that I am planting grow. Sometimes you're planting seeds in soil that is not fertile and you're wondering why you're not getting anywhere, ladies and gents. You need to look for the fruit, look for that fertile soil and those people in your life. And when you see that, you need to plant in that. That's where you need to be planting those seeds so that they can multiply and so that they can grow in their life. Jesus talked about the parable of the talents. You know, he gave one person this much, he gave the next person this much, he gave the final person this much. And one dude went and he just buried his in the ground. And when, you know, the, the master came back around, he said, what are you doing? You know, you didn't multiply this. And he said, well, I knew that you were a severe man. And, you know, so I just thought that I would bury it. And he goes, no, that's not being faithful to steward what I've given you. It's kind of crazy to think about friendships this way, but it's really important, you guys. You know, friendships are something that we're called to multiply. Relationships in our life are supposed to bring multiplication. And that doesn't always mean, you know, sometimes it can mean a marriage relationship, right, where we physically multiply, multiply. But friendships are supposed to bring a multiplication of good fruit for the kingdom. Amen. Alliances in your life are supposed to bring a multiplication of good fruit. And sometimes that can look like, yes, reaching the lost, you know, doing X, Y, Z. But sometimes it's a multiplication inside of you. It's a multiplication of your character growing. It's a multiplication of you being built up in your worth in Christ. It's a multiplication of good things, of good seeds that God is trying to bring out of you. And if you're putting those seeds into infertile soil and people who are not invested, in their walk with Christ and who are not invested in you, then you're planting in the wrong source and you shouldn't be surprised when you don't see multiplication there. Amen? So this is really important. So watch out for those people who are only for you when they're getting something from you. Okay? So there's got to be a little bit of give and take in that friendship. All right? Um, the next one is something we've kind of touched on, but I want to reiterate a little bit more. Okay? So fake friends are those who are not respectful of your time. They're not respectful of your time. So for example, ghosts, they ghost you when you text them all the time. You know, sometimes they'll act really on fire, hot for you kind of a thing. And then they'll go almost like they just don't even exist in your life for a while. And then they'll pop up out of the blue out of nowhere and suddenly pretend to be super invested, okay? That's usually an alarm bell, whether it comes to a relationship or a friendship in your personal life. Amen. And I think we give people grace. You shouldn't expect people to respond immediately. People have busy lives. But, you know, at the same time, if they're never getting back to you or if it's always days later when you're hearing from this person, that should be an alarm bell. Okay. They're showing you that they do not respect you and your friendship when they participate in this stuff. Okay. Um, if they're inconsistent towards you, you know, that has to do with that hot and cold piece. They act like they're for you one day, you know, but then you find out they're gossiping behind your back the next day. They act like they want to hang out over here, but they're canceling on you over here, okay? Um, the other thing is, and this seems like such a simple thing, but I want to talk to you guys about why this is a thing that is a characteristic of good character, okay? People who constantly show up late on you. And you might say to me, well, Jill, that's not really a huge deal. Well, I want you guys to think about it from this perspective, okay? If a person is constantly showing up late and if they can't do what they say they're going to do um, on a regular basis, every once in a while people are going to have issues and that's fine. But look at the patterns, okay? If they can't ever show up on time, if they're not ever, you know, doing what they say they're going to do, that shows that they are not in alignment with the character of Jesus, okay? So let me throw it to you this way, all right? 
Jesus has to do what he says he's going to do. So if Jesus said he's going to show up at 12 o'clock p.m., he cannot tell a lie, right? The word says he cannot tell a lie. When the word goes forth, it will accomplish what it says it's going to accomplish, amen? And so if Jesus says he's going to show up at 12 o'clock for lunch, you could bet everything on that because he will be there because God can't tell a lie. So our character in Christ is shown a lot of the time by whether or not we keep our word. Amen. And so if you are hanging out around people who are always showing up late, who are never respectful, who tell you one thing and then do something else, that shows you a character problem, ladies and gentlemen, that God needs to work on in that person's life. And so that can be a characteristic of a fake friendship because they're not respecting your time. Amen. You know, there, there have been times where, you know, I have told people, no to services because of this. I have appliances that were um, supposed to be dropped off at my house. I bought a new, uh, it was horrible. My washer conked out and then like a month later the dryer conked out and it can never happen where it's separated out, right? It always happens where it just hits your finances all at once. So I had this a while back and I was having them deliver washer dryer because I didn't have a truck or anything that I could get it to my place with. And so um, they were supposed to show up in this specific time window and I had taken off from work and, you know, I had done all of this stuff to make sure that I would be there in the window and they didn't show up. And so I called the place and I said, hey, they said they were going to be there on this day at this time. I double checked it. I had to take off of work for this. And they said, oh, well, they, they couldn't do it. They must have gotten held up. We'll, we'll send them out tomorrow. And I said, no, I don't really want services from this. I'd rather just take the refund. You know, it was like I invested this time to take off of work to do this. You didn't show up and you didn't even call you know, to say that you weren't going to be able to be there. This is not a place that I want to be in alignment with. And you know what? We've got to get to the place in our lives where you realize, and it's not in a stuck up way, but your time is valuable. Ladies and gents, a lot of you guys are serving the kingdom. You're chasing after Jesus and you're hanging on to friendships and people in your life who they can't be counted on. And that could be a great example of a fake friend because they do not value that friendship enough to be consistent with. Amen. And so it's something we got to check ourselves on too. If we're that person who's never showing up, who's never, you know, abiding by our word, that can really mess up even your faith walk. Okay. Here's the deal. When you decree something forth and you're lying all the time, you're not going to believe that what you say will come to pass. That messes with your faith. This is why not lying is critical in your life as a Christian. Ladies and gents, we wonder why when we decree something forth, you know, I'm, 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 blessed and highly favored of the Lord, whatever we're saying to ourselves. You know, when you walk around lying all the time and doing opposite of what you're decreeing, yes, that's going to affect your belief walk, ladies and gents. That's going to affect your faith. And so we need to be people of our word and we need to abide by what we say we're going to abide by. And we need to align ourselves with people who are headed in the same direction. It's not to say they got to be perfect. None of us are perfect. We're always going to have mess up slip ups occasionally because we're human we're not jesus right but as a overall pattern align yourself with people who can be counted on amen the next type of fake friendship are people who put you down more than they build you up now we're going to talk about accountability in a second and telling the truth and love which is also critical in a friendship but I'm talking about the people who they never have anything nice to say about you. They're constantly beating you over the head. They're not building you up in your walk with Christ. That's not healthy, ladies and gents. Amen. If every time you pick up the phone, you dread talking to this person because you know you're just going to get chewed out, that's not of God either. Okay. Surround yourself by people who are building you up and are encouraging you to do better and to go higher in your walk with God. Okay. So, um... The other one that I want to talk about here with the fake friendship piece is something that you may not think about a lot of the time, but these are people who will not tell you the truth in love. People who will not tell you the truth in love. Um, I have several friends in my life who are incredibly blunt, <laughs> and um, sometimes they don't know how to deliver it in love the way that they should, but their heart's right. Like, I know them pretty well. And I want to tell you guys, it is such a treasure to have people in your life who will tell you the truth in love over things, okay? And they shouldn't be speaking up all the time and just hating on you, but when something's a big deal, they should be talking to you, ladies and gents, you know? And I think a lot of the times our human nature is to surround ourselves by people who are always going to tell us yes, who are always going to tell us what we want to hear, who are never going to check us or call us on stuff in areas of our life where we need to have that discernment, you know? Um, I've had friendships in my life where I saw 
a person who was about to get married to someone who was an unbeliever, who was, you know, um, really not good in their walk with God, who was, you know, showing signs of abuse or whatever. And they would come up to me and they would ask, what do you think about this? A lot of people would just say, oh, it's fine. Go ahead, get married, do blah, blah, blah. That ain't your girl. If you gonna ask me outright and I see an alarm bell, we gonna have a conversation, okay? And I tell them, be prepared for that. And I always ask, do you want me to say what I really think or do you want me to just listen right now, right? Because a lot of people don't wanna hear truth. We've gotta ask ourselves, are we a people who are willing to be held to a place of accountability? Because accountability hurts in the moment. Discipline hurts in the moment a lot of the time, ladies and gents. But it can spare you so much heartache down the line in your life. And we need those quote unquote blunt friends. We need those friends who are gonna tell us how it is in love a lot of the time, ladies and gents, because it can keep your feet from being snared in so many different areas of your life. But a lot of people don't want that. A lot of people only want people in their life that are going to say yes to their decisions, regardless of whether or not they're godly or good for them in their personal life, and they don't listen to advice. You know, when that voice of accountability comes in and says, hey, you know, my discerner's kind of picking up on this thing here. Maybe we need to think about this. Maybe we need to take a step back. They'll shut those people down and go, there's no way. This is what I want in my life. I'm picking it regardless. You know, I want to do it this way, and Jesus is just going to have to deal. This is the way it's going to go. All right, and here's the deal. Wisdom is good, but people's opinions are not God's opinions should always go with what God says first over our lives. There's a lot of worth in wise counsel, especially when you're blinded in situations. Dating couples, let me talk to you. In relationships, you are blinded a lot of the time because you love that person, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But those are times when you need to rely on family and friends to speak into your life and go, hey, this person's showing signs they don't really respect you. I know you really like them. I know this is hard, but we're kind of getting alarm bells over here. Hey, you're dating a non-believer over here and the Bible says that you should only be dating a believer and so this is something that you should probably pay attention to. You probably shouldn't sit in this thing. But so many people don't want to hear that truth talk. But if you can get you some friends who know how to do this well to speak into your life with love, it will help you to be so much more successful in your life and to avoid so much heartache. You know, I have one friend in particular. She's pretty close to me and she is a big source of accountability in my life and I run decisions by her we pray about things I talk to her and the reason that I keep her so close as accountability in my life is she will be blunt with me and she will tell me right out Jill that's really stupid you should not do that and you know in the moment it kind of makes me giggle now like before I was like oh that offends me like you know my attitude was just you know <laughs> not fully there but it was one of those where it's just ouch in the moment but now it almost makes me giggle because she'll just throw it out there and I'll go okay let me take that to God in prayer and I appreciate that now if we could get to that place where every little thing isn't offending us or you know causing us to want to shut people down 24 7 if we would just get to the place where we bring this stuff to God it could save us from so much heartache in our life and I want to tell you guys people who do this in love that's a big thing in love with you in your personal life are gems and they're really, really good to keep around. And if you can get yourself to a place where you are willing to receive this feedback, it can help you a lot as a person and to go farther. Okay. All right. So we talked about friendships who will just be yes people and won't tell you the truth in love. You need some friends who can tell you the truth in love. Amen. And you need to have those conversations with them. Sometimes people are reluctant to tell you the truth. And I, I've had that conversation with a pretty much all of my close friends. And I've said, hey, if I'm doing something stupid, I want you to let me know about it. You know, if, it, if there's something that your discerner is off, I give you full permission to come to me in love and to say, hey, I just wanted to let you know I noticed this. And I don't agree to always do what they say. So they may bring something to me and I may be hearing something different from God. So I don't think that I'm always going to do what they bring up to me. But I do consider it and bring that stuff in the place of prayer to God. And more often than not, if they're bringing something up to me, they're right. Jesus is talking to them about that a lot of the time. Okay. All right. Psalm 15, 3 says, He does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up reproach against his friend. Now, 
we don't use that word reproach much in our language these days. It's kind of more of an older word that we don't hear going around as much. So I wanted to tell you a definition of reproach. Reproach is to address someone in such a way as to express disapproval or disappointment, okay? And so, you know, when it says, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, this is going back to what we talked about earlier. That person who is constantly making you feel like you're never enough, constantly just batting you over the head. And there's a balance here. You need those friends that are going to speak accountability into your life, but you don't need the people who 24-7 are just beating you up. Amen. And so there is balance to these things. You need friendships that are encouraging you, uplifting you in your walk with God. And then in those moments when we slip up, can come in and gently say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Let's head in a different direction. All right. So you guys saw I posted a status earlier, and I wanted to read it to you guys because it's curdled. Cool. So a question to ask yourself, am I hanging out with this person, whether it's a relationship or a friendship in your personal life, because I'm lonely or Am I hanging out with this person because they're a good friend, a good influence, who is leading me closer to the Lord and my walk with Christ? Don't let loneliness be your excuse to hang out with the wrong crowd. I can't tell you how many sad couples I have talked to who got married just because they were lonely. They settled. They did not wait on God. They did not wait on the pick that he had for them. And they go, well, they're good enough. I mean, they're not on fire with their walk with God like I am. We aren't really looking for the same things. But they're technically a Christian. So I guess why not? I'm lonely. I don't want to do this anymore. So I'm just going to find someone. Ladies and gents, those are the decisions that you're going to regret down the line. How often in friendships do we do the exact same thing? We hang out with friends in our personal lives because we're lonely. And we know that that person isn't good news. We know that that person is leading us away from God. We know that that person is not healthy in our personal lives. But when we are bored, when we're lonely, we pick up the phone and call them anyway just because we're bored or lonely. Ladies and gents, that's not good. And I wanted to remind you of 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, bad company corrupts good morals. Again, stuff rubs off. So when you're hanging out around these people just because you're bored or lonely and you know they're a bad influence in your life, it is affecting you whether you realize it in that moment or not because that bad company is corrupting your good morals. You've got to be careful, ladies and gents, okay? All right, I want to end with this when it comes to fake friendships. And I want to tell you this. This was another status that I posted today. Just because it's familiar in your life does not necessarily mean that it's healthy. Sometimes it is. But just because it is familiar does not necessarily mean that it's healthy. Go back to my friendship example. Friends for 16 years. It was healthy to a certain extent, but then there was a moment when stuff flipped, ladies and gents. And so, you know, it was familiar. I was trying to hang on to it because it was familiar, but it didn't necessarily mean that it was healthy. And so we've got to be willing to surrender and to pray and to say, Lord, I pray that you would look at my friendships and my relationships. Look at my alliances in my personal life. I pray that you would expose the things that are not of you. And God, even if my flesh doesn't like it in the moment, remove those people that are not of you to make way for the new, to make way for those healthy alliances and connections in my personal life. And here's the biggest one. You ready for this? So often we're praying for good friendships and relationships. But how often do we pray, God, help me to be a good friend to other people, to the friendships in my life. Help me to be healthy walking into a new relationship. Amen. So first and foremost, it's always good to examine ourselves first, to pray these prayers and to say, God, help me to be good so that we can go and love on other people. The other thing I want to leave you guys with is this. So often we make our friendships and relationships about me, 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 me. And it's good to examine stuff. All right, but the true blessing is when you get to give back and love on other people in their lives. And so I want to leave you guys with a challenge today. Think about the friendships, relationships, alliances that you have in your life right now. What can you do today to bless and to love on somebody else? Maybe you can write them a handwritten card telling them how much you appreciate them. Maybe you can, you know, go if you're out to work with a coworker, go buy their lunch for that day. You know, maybe you could call up a parent that you haven't talked to in a while and love on them. What can you do to be a blessing to somebody else's life in your personal life today? Amen? I want to leave you with that. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you have a great day, and I will chat with you again soon. Happy Friday.